morning, friend. Let us remain standing just a moment. Dear God, as we in this hustle and bustle of life have paused for these next few moments or hour, whatever it may be, that thou hast provided for us to give praise and glory to thee, to preach thy word, to know thee better. That's why we have gathered this morning. We thank thee, God, because that there is people who are ready and have prepared themselves to come listen, regardless of the condition and the time and that we live in, they still believe, and we thank thee for them. God, we are grateful to thee for thy great healing power, the promises of thy word. How our hearts burn when we hear these testimonies, all kinds of afflictions that's been uh, brought upon the sons of man, thou and thy grace and power with thy promise has healed them. And they're here testifying, giving praise to God. We thank thee for this. Now may we today hear the message that thou hast provided for us for this hour. As we read in thy word, may you give to us the context of that which we read. Let thy will be done in all things, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And be seated. It's a privilege to be here this morning. I'm very happy for all of you. And Brother Woods, Brother Roy Roberson, many of the other brethren has worked faithfully the last two days to air condition this building for this purpose. Because last Sunday they seen how you suffered. And they had a little money in the church treasurer and they went to work and put it to work to make you comfortable with the money that you placed into the offering. Uh, while you can sit listen at the message. Much cooler today than it was then. So we're grateful to God and to you people for this opportunity. Glad Brother Roy Borders, he wanted to kind of stay back in the back this morning. And I told him to get his chairs set out here with these ministers, but he wouldn't do it as all of you know. Brother Borders represents us in the field. So glad to have Brother Borders in and many other ministers and friends. Through the week, I, I get to thinking and they, when I get down there Sunday, I'm going to recognize every minister, every person. Then when you get here, you're so tucked up in the message to you just forget everything almost, so what it was. Now, I got to go back to Arizona. I got to go back next Monday week, back to Tucson to get the children there for school. And I'm coming back then after that. And uh, the wife has to be there early to begin the, uh, to register the children two weeks before school starts. And uh, then I am going to return back for a while here. And now this is my vacation time. As you know, I have preached since December, January, February, March, April, May, June, and July. Now, God willing, not any special call, this is the season that I I, I take my rest, my vacation, I go hunting. And uh, now, if the Lord should call me to something else, then things are out of the picture. God's always first. Now, I want him to be first. You want him to be first. But then if there's no certain call, and that be his will, that's what I'm to do now for the next couple of months, is to go hunting. Now, to rest myself. Uh, you don't realize the world will never know what I have to go through with. And it's um, just such a strain. No wonder the Lord told his disciples when he was walking with them, come apart into the desert. Rest a while. I realize that more every day, and especially as my days get more up on the earth. You see, you get older, you realize it. You hear our pastor saying amen to that too. He, we can realize that we're not boys if we pass 50 years old. Now, we got to have a little time. We're so grateful for the testimonies that we've just heard. Wife was over at Miss Woods's yesterday when some people come in from down in Alabama, somewhere down in there, and was telling about the great things the Lord did in that meeting of little children being healed and different things. And so many things that I just take 
a long time to, to get it cold. Amen. Then I also have to remember that I believe some of them told me that Sister Larson has been here two Sundays with a little baby. I wouldn't know, but I believe they said it was her grandchild, maybe, for dedication. Bring it down from Chicago. The lady's been very kind to us, and we appreciate her. And she brought a little baby from Chicago for dedication, which she has quite a little time to get it out, I think, for dedication. But she's interested in this child uh, being dedicated to the Lord. So if Sister Larson will, while I'm speaking, if she'll just bring that baby up for this dedicational service. And then perhaps while she's making ready, I, I want to say that this has been the, the hardest message that I ever did try to prepare until last night through the week I would go into the room to try to set aside after my calls and things to, to try to get uh, something on my mind for the hour. And when I would go, I, I couldn't even, my mind was blank. And le yesterday I went into the basement. I thought it was too hot, so I went out into the basement. Sit down there and I try to get my Bible to read, and I'd fall asleep. Then I would get up and get a drink of water and try to shake myself and go outside and walk around, sit on the step. Somebody come by and caught me with my shirt off, sitting on the step. It's so hot. They waved. I didn't know where they waved. Somebody, it might have been somebody here local in the city, or it might have been somebody in the church, waved at me. And I, I was so thinking, I, I just happened to glance at the car pass by, and I waved. Last night, I got into the car and went up and around towards Charleston, trying to get something... The Lord seemed like wanted to tell me something, but I, Satan was trying to stand in my way to keep me from doing it. So I thought, well, if he does that, I'm just going to keep on tearing, just keep on waiting, pounding at the door until he opens. And so then, just a few moments ago, or just about a little after 7 o'clock this morning, I was up real early. Yesterday, a little sick kind, I'd eaten some corn that hadn't agreed with me just right, being real hot, and I, I was trying to get away from that. and. And uh, then this morning, about 8 o'clock, I happened to pick up a scripture that's astounded me. Now I looked at that scripture again, and again it astounded me. And I went following it through the scripture, and I just got through a few minutes ago. So it may be that the Lord has a message for us this morning that Satan has tried Amen. to keep from us. Would you bring the little one here, Sister Lord? God be with them and help them. Now. I have been keeping you last Sunday two days, and I think, or two services, morning and evening, and that makes it hard on you. I understood that it, uh, some of you have traveled so far, miss a day's work, and so forth. So even if we are going to leave Sunday, Monday week, I'll just announce the service for next Sunday, the Lord willing, see? unless the congregation would want it to be stay over for the night. See, that's that's a there's so many of you. How many would rather it be tonight? Let's see, have a service tonight. Now, I would rather have it in the next Sunday. Raise your hand. Next. Woo, wow, that's a close one. Mm. Mm. What's that? <laughs> now, Ben? <laughs> um, I got this message is long this morning, but I, I don't know just how. And I know I help make the rules of the church, but in there, if you'll notice, I said, except I am taping. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amen. this is taping. <laughs> so, um, maybe we will try to get back both times tonight and uh, next Sunday, then, we'll, if the Lord Amen. willing. Now, Amen. if you don't get a message this week, then you come next Sunday. I hate to have you come twice like that. But I feel we haven't got but just a little more time. Amen. And just remember, if time moves on, we're not going to have this privilege very long. Amen. Okay? Remember, something will take place. Either the law will stop us or Satan will move among you and scatter you. It's always been that way. Something will take place. So let's appreciate every minute that we're together. So now to those who have to go back to your homes, tonight it would be like last Sunday night. I just had a little short message. And so you, um, if you want to own tape, well, we'll sure send you the tape if you have to go back home or not. I'm going to preach tonight, if the Lord willing. I had a note yesterday or a day before yesterday, a little message I jotted down from memory of something, and um, from a long time. There's two messages, though, 
time between one of them is a leaking cistern or either uh, 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 sowing to the wind and reaping a whirlwind. It's the gospel message this morning is teaching. And so tonight I'll either speak on sowing to the winds and reaping a whirlwind or either a cistern that is leaking. In this morning, I want to read from the Holy Writ now. And are you comfortable? Say amen. amen. Now, I want you in your Bibles to turn with me to the book of Hosea. You who desire to read. And let us read a few verses out of the sixth chapter of the book of Hosea the prophet. And shall we stand? Dear God, we are unworthy to take this book into our hand, for we read in the Scriptures that no man in heaven or in earth or beneath the earth was worthy or even able to take the book or even to look upon it. Oh, when there came one that had been like a lamb had been slain, he took the book, for he was worthy, and he loosed the seals thereof. And we're looking to him this morning to reveal these contexts that's written in the book because it is the book of redemption. All that is redeemed is written therein. May we find our position this morning in the time that we're living, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Come now and let us return to the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he receive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, he is going forth, is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like man, have transgressed the covenant. They have they have dwelt tetrously against me. Gilead is the city of them that work iniquity, and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent and commit lewdness. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the hordenum of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he has sent a harvest for thee when I return the captive of my people. Lord Jesus, draw from this by thy Holy Spirit the context that's intended as we wait further on thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my subject this morning is recognizing your day and its message. We see from last Sunday's lesson as we taught the Feast of the Trumpets. I want to call to your attention now the time, uh, time of Israel in God's timepiece. 
We are dealing today upon a Sunday school lesson that I want you to realize and recognize uh, the time that we're living. We're just about to run out, as you see. And then by this, you should know the very hour and time, and sign and message that you are to receive. Now, as we started last Sunday, we've been speaking of going to preach on the trumpets, the last seven trumpets of the Bible. And me and myself, I thought they would break forth just like the seals. But I've noticed on each one of these openings there has been a tremendous thing happen. As we reached the seven church ages, they were so perfectly until the Holy Spirit himself come down among us and vindicated it and put it upon the papers and throw it across the nation and showed it in the moon in the heavens and proved it to us weeks and months before it happened that just the way it would be, perfectly. Here in the tabernacle he made it known. Here on the, in the time he made it known. On the moon and the sun he made it known. And in the position of the nations at this time he made it known. As the hierarchy of Rome left and went back to Palestine. Supposedly it had been the first pope back since they claimed Peter being the Pope. Now, it was so tremendous. Then we see before the seven seals that hid all the mysteries, me not knowing what I was drawing on the board for the church ages. I never, God knows, just by vision I draw it, not knowing that God a year and six months later was going to vindicate it in the skies by the moon and slip it across the national papers. I didn't know that. I didn't know there'd be a mysterious blackout in the moon. To represent this lady of see age. Now on the papers you only get the six ages. It's because the lady of see church was blacked out completely. And if you notice the spiritual application, as God said it in the heaven, when I said it here on earth, I left a little bitty space, as you see, just a teeny little bit of light. That was just before the very elected was to be called from the earth. The reason I placed it on there for the seventh age. But when God put it in the heavens, it was totally blacked out. Means maybe the last one is called from that Lady Osea age. We don't know. There could be a sermon on it. Now, notice again before the, the seven seals, which I had no idea it was that way. Here at the tabernacle, he spoke of it and sent me to Tucson, Arizona, telling you all what would happen. And there's man sitting present today who was there to see it happen. Just exactly the way it was told here would happen. Seven angels would come. Then the newspapers packed that, the magazine. Across the nation, mysterious circle of light in the form of a pyramid, just like I draw it here and showed you. Raised up from where those angels were standing and went... 30 miles high and was 27 miles across, or either 27 miles high and 30 miles across. I forget which it was. And was seen throughout the state, just up above Tucson, Arizona, right where it happened, same time. See, the, the Bible, God is not just, this is just not someone trying to depress something to you, but to reveal to you the very spiritual application of this hour. And then the next message, that opened up the seven seals, which undone all the hidden mysteries of the Bible, the doctrines and so forth, which the world so rudely attacks nowadays. Attacks it and says it's wrong. This, that. The other day in Arizona, spliced some tapes to try to make me say things that I didn't say. Just remember the vision about the Arizona proposition. The Bible said it was far better for you that you had a rock at your neck. And another thing, that whosoever, let him be preacher or what he will, will take one word away from it or add one word to it. People are putting their own interpretation upon the word as it's been given, trying to make it say something that I did not say. Not my word, it's his word. Who shall add to or take away? And then the vision, we've seen these prophets whirl down, as I explained to you, I believe, several Sundays ago. 
Law be I said, just keep away from it. As long as I'm fighting it, then God can't fight it. But let's let him have it. He's the one who takes care of it. Now, we noticed last Sunday there was preaching the feast days, and there was a feast of Pentecost. And between the feast of Pentecost and the feast of trumpets, there was a long period of time, exactly 50 days between Pentecost and the feast of the trumpets. And 50 days, which Pentecost means 50, it was the sheep waiting or the, the first fruits of the harvest was brought in. And we see it was in tight back there with the natural first fruits representing the first fruits of the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon the people. And we find out then that them 50 days was received by the Gentiles, which God called from the Gentiles a people for his name, the Feast of the of Pentecost. And we have been going through that long Feast of Pentecost. Now, actually, from the 50 days would be exactly seven Sabbaths. And seven Sabbaths represented the seven church ages to be called in the time of the Pentecostal feast of Pentecost to call a people from the Gentiles for his name. Now, at the end of these seven uh, Sabbaths, which has been... There was to be the Day of Atonement, which was the seven trumpets. And the seven trumpets was to call a day of mourning back for the sacrifice or the atonement. And we find out then that Israel, the seven trumpets, pertained only to Israel. And then why he wouldn't let me preach them seven trumpets? I even was ready to announce it, had the halls ready and everything to go into to preach the seven trumpets. And I said, there's something bothering me so bad. I said, we kept on working and Billy and all of us trying to get everything ready for the air conditioned building for this next coming week for the seven trumpets having uh, 10 days or eight days at the school auditorium. But the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me do it for some reason. And I wondered why. And when I went in to pray, I told the wife. I'm going in and sincerely I knelt down before God to pray and he revealed to me them seven trumpets sounded under the sixth seal and I've done preached it. Supernaturally. See, it's the hand of God, the whole thing. It pertains to Israel and we picked it up under the sixth seal, you all who have that. How the persecution of the Jews. The time of the Gentiles has been in this Pentecostal feast. The trumpets... Under all of them was sounded under the sixth seal, and we picked it up last Sunday under the Feast of the Trumpets, if you all want to get it. What was it to do? To rush the Jews from all parts of the world back into their homeland. It must be there. And the opening of the seals under the sixth seal and under the seven trumpets sounded in the, the sixth seal. Now, the seventh angel's message is to open the mystery of the seals, calling the eleventh hour Gentile workers to receive the same pay that the first hour workers got. See? Now, Jesus taught it. He said there was uh, some peoples went into the harvest. They were hired. And when they did, of early morning, they received uh, a, a time, a penny for the day. And then at noontime, Someone else come in and went to work. And then at the eleventh hour, that's the last hour of the day, that someone come in and receive the same kind of pay that they did at the first hour of the day. Last hour. It's so perfectly how the first hour messengers with the word, with the gospel, with the truth, they came in at the day of Pentecost. Then there was a dark age that blocked them out. Then at the middle of the day, Luther and Wesley and them came in. And then there is to be an evening time message. And to receive the same thing that they did at the beginning. The evening time message is to restore back again. 
to bring back that same thing again. And remember the vision of last week, that when the bride came to be a preview of it, there came up the little bride, lovely, in the vision. And I, not thinking about it, just sitting there watching outside, and there come the bride. I heard a voice from the side of me said, here is a preview of the bride. And she came by. I noticed her the way she was. Very lovely, pretty, young. She's walking just the step as she could. Not a march, just in the stride of a, a woman. How they walk gracefully, ladylike. That's the way she was walking, coming to my left on this side. And she went out of my sight. Then he turned me to the right side. And he showed me each church as they've come up out of the ages. And oh, how vulgar. And the last one was this last day church age, which was led by a witch. And they were so immorally dressed, so filthy looking. And they were marching to the time of twist and rock and roll and those women throwing themselves just in twist, but holding just paper, gray, hypocritical, the, word, the gray is between a white and a black, which is a deceiving color. Gray is neither white nor black. It's a deceiving color. And gray-looking paper holding in front of them with lace-like hula skirts holding in front of them and completely nude from their waist up and was marching to the or time or twisting and carrying on with that music, walking up and said, that is the church. And when it passed by me, my heart like to fainted. I thought, if that's what is trying to be presented to Christ as a bride, of all the efforts and things that man has put forth to try to bring forth a bride for Christ in a vulgar, dirty, filthy-looking prostitute like that to be the bride of Christ. It made me sick in my heart. And she passed after she, coming before where we were standing, she was holding the paper in front of her, twisting and rocking and moving herself one side and then the other side as she went like the modern uh, dances they have of this day, using herself in an immoral act as she was marching on. I'm not responsible for these things. I can only say what I see and God is my judge. But that was the church from USA. Now, as she passed by, the whole back part had no covering at all. And then as she passed by, I felt faint and sickly. Then he said, the bride will come into preview again. And here the bride came behind her, the very same looking bride that passed at the beginning. Then my heart jumped for joy to know that there will be a bride, and she'll be made of the same thing, clothed in the same thing that the one was at the beginning. She is to be called. And I know that is the truth. Yes. If that isn't true, then every vision that I've had in the back has been wrong. Amen. And anyone knows that not one thing has he ever told us of what was the truth. Amen. It come to pass just... And can you see then the filthiness of the modern church? Calling yourself a church, as someone said the other day, Brother Ruddle, a precious brother of mine standing against the wall over there now, that he's seen it like a sucker on a vine. And we were discussing it in the room the other day. Brother Ruddle was disturbed about the conditions of time and the, and the feeling of the Spirit in the churches today, how it's beginning to drop down. Ministers coming from everywhere, interviews out here, asking, what has happened, Brother Branham? What has happened? Oh, my. Brother Ruddle asked me the question, are they living off of the Spirit of Satan or what? I said, no. The sucker lives off of the strength of the vine. It lives because the citrus fruit, a, a lemon, will grow in an orange tree, but it will not bear oranges, though it lives by its life. And the church so-called only is a grafted sucker living under the name of religion, under the name of the church, Catholic and Protestant, just suckers. Pulling the 
from the strength of the vine and yet bearing the fruit of what they are because they wasn't converted. They wasn't in the original predestinated plan of God. That's the reason they have to deny the word and bear the kind of fruit. The real genuine tree in its root was predestinated to bring forth oranges on an orange tree. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. But if that tree ever puts forth another branch, it will bear its original fruit. And there has got to be a restoration of all these things right at the end of the vine. There is to come forth a restoration, an evening light to light it up and to make it right. But it will come out of the vine. Not a denomination is grafted into it, but a original production of the Word. It's to come forth for the evening time. And there will be light in the evening time. It takes a light to write. You see how perfectly the Scripture is? A day that won't be called day or night. Fruit cannot ripen unless the sun ripens it. No matter how much you preach, whatever you do, it cannot be ripened. It cannot be manifested. It cannot be vindicated only by him who said, I am the light of the world. The Word. So there has to come forth a, a, a power. The Holy Spirit himself to ripen or to vindicate or to prove or to make manifested that what he's predicted would happen in this day. The evening light produces that. What a time. The bride passed in the same position that she was when she was at the beginning. But I was watching her getting out of step and trying to pull her back. Now, much to be said on these things of the day that we're living. Now, Hosea said in 6.1, Return to the Lord. Remember, he said that they would be scattered. And they were. He said they would return to the Lord after they'd been scattered. And he would will bind them up. Notice, return and be scattered. The second they were torn and was blinded. That's just exactly what happened. He will heal us and bind us up. Like Ezekiel 37, the dry bones, the valley full of dry bones. Ezekiel saw it, their return again. Then notice, Hosea said, after two days, after two days, he would return to them. He will receive us and give us Revive us. Now, revive doesn't mean resurrection. Revive there is the same word used anywhere else. I just looked it up. It means a revival. He will revive us after two days. That would be in the third day. He will revive us again after he scattered us and blinded us and tore us. You know, the Jews were blinded for the very purpose that we could have sight. They were torn apart and scattered as a nation and rejected their Messiah, that we might receive the Messiah, that there might be a people called out of the Gentiles for his name's sake. Now the man comes forth and the woman takes his name. These blinded Gentiles who can't see that name, the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism. It's just too bad, but it has to be that way. The Jews, they had to... They had to uh, uh, not see that. There's only one can see it. That's the one who's predestinated to see it. Otherwise, you'll never see it. The Jews cannot see that being their Messiah, and yet they were scholars and theologians, men of great renowned scholarship, read the same Bible that you read. Now, it has been made known to us, we can see a plane that was Messiah. But they couldn't see it. Neither can they see it today. They are prophesied to be blinded to. The church this day is prophesied to be blinded to reject the evening time message. Revelation 3 said so. The heart wretched, miserable. Notice the bride's condition the other night of the church. Naked. Blind. And don't know it. Lord Jesus be 
merciful to us. The Bible said she was naked. I never saw it till just now. Lady Osea Church was naked. And when she appeared the other night, she was naked. Amen. Never noticed it. And didn't know it. Oh, how thankful. How, no wonder we are so grateful. I feel that we're not grateful enough for the things that God is making known to us. Naked. And the visions said, showed me she was naked. And didn't know it. Blinded. As Israel was blinded, so that the Gentiles could come in, now the Gentiles are blinded so the bride can be taken out and Israel can receive the Feast of Trumpets. Just perfectly. After two days, he will revive us or give us a revival, bringing us together, the Jews speaking on these trumpets now. And he shall, and we shall live in his sight or have eternal life. See, we'll be uh, in his sight. The Bible said here in Hosea said, and we shall live in his sight. Life, have life in his sight. That's his own life, eternal life. Have life in his sight. She that lives in pleasure is dead while she's alive. So we promised that Israel again would have life in his sight. She's been dead to the facts of the Pentecostal feast. Notice carefully. Then after two days, now that didn't mean two 24-hour days, because it's been, that happened way back under many hundreds of years ago. See? It meant two days with the Lord. After 2,000 years, now, you know how long it's been since that time? It's been 2,700 years since that. Because in Hosea here, it's B.C. 780, 1964. See, it's been something over 2,700 years ago. He said, after two days, in the third day, he will revive us again and give us life in his sight. There's your trumpets coming in. That's the hour that we're living a day that we're living. Now, they have been scattered, blinded, gathered, and are far into the third day. You see it? They were scattered from Palestine throughout the world. They were blinded to reject the Messiah. And now they have been gathered in their homeland ready for the trumpets to recognize the atonement. As the Bible said, when they receive it and find him with the snail scars after the church is taken, and they say, where did you get these scars? He said, in the house of my friends. And he said they would separate each family and would cry and weep for days like a family lost their only son. Remember that feast of trumpets was to do that. To weep mourn or the killed sacrifice and they had rejected it they're in their land they were scattered blinded and now gathered as all under that sixth seal there's seven trumpets sounded to gather them together the sixth trumpet the seventh is that great trumpet as we had last sunday the sixth trumpet sounded under the sixth seal just like our sixth seal opened. Everything at the same time, only theirs all sounded at once where we've been 2,000 years in the Pentecostal feast. Now, 2,700 years since that time. He said, in the third day, we'll be gathered again. Amen. Amen. After two days in the third day, we will be gathered again and receive life in his sight. Do you see the promise? The hour perfectly wrote on the wall. We see where we are living. Now in the homeland, waiting for the feast of the trumpets, or the recognizing of the atonement, and to uh, wait for the coming, to mourn for their rejection of the first time that they rejected it. They're in the homeland for that. Waiting. What are they all? Everything is positionally placed. The minister of the gospel, I can't see one thing left but the going of the bride. 
and the bride has to be taken away before they can recognize what's happened. They were bound, scattered, I mean they were scattered, blinded, and now gathered. What's left? The bride to be taken out of the way, waiting for the going of the bride, so their prophets of Revelation 11 can call them to the feast of the trumpet to make them to recognize what they have done. Remember, right between those seals came forth the sixth seal, and there was 144,000 chosen and called, and between the sixth and seventh trumpet, Revelation 11 appears right there exactly in line with the sixth seal. What to do? What was it to do? And this was to bring forth two witnesses, Moses and Elias. Prophets, which the Jews only believe they're prophets. And they'll come forth with the sign of the prophets. And their work will be that of the prophet. Or they did exactly what, showing one thing. That man, when you die, whatever, when you leave this world, your nature doesn't change. If you're a liar now, you'll be a liar there. If you're hot-headed here, you'll be hot-headed there. If you're a doubter here, you'd be a doubter there. Men and women, it's time to shake yourselves and to examine yourselves and see where we are standing. For death does not change it. They've been gone for 2,000 years. Moses for about 2,500 years. And Elijah for uh, ever since almost 2,500 years. Has Elijah been gone and Moses has been gone? And here they return with the same nature and do the same thing. Death doesn't do nothing to a man but change his dwelling place. Doesn't change your nature. Doesn't change your faith. Doesn't change nothing in you but your dwelling place. So which way your nature is this morning, if you're a doubter of God's Word, you'd be a doubter over there. I don't care how holy you are, how you live, and how good you live. It wouldn't change you one bit to die. Just your dwelling place. If you can't accept the whole Word of God the way it's written, you wouldn't do it there. So don't worry, you won't be there. You've got to accept it in this fullness and the power of its vindication and the revelation of what it is. Then you become a part of it. It's only His Word that He'll raise up. As He did His Word on the first Easter morning, only His Word came forth. And those who had died in His Word... Believing his word and vindicated his word. Notice, now that's been 2,700 years ago. Notice they were scattered. They were blinded. And now they've been gathered. Now the next thing is that they are to receive life. And the Gentiles are called out. The bride's ready. The rapture is at hand. Can we realize that? Can we actually believe that? Is it a story that's been told? Is it a myth to us? Is it a something that sounds real? Is it something that we outside can believe? Or is it something that's in us? That's part of us. But it's more than life to us. What attitude do we sit in this morning in this tabernacle? Remember, it'll be a small flock that receives it. Now in the homeland, waiting for the trumpets. Now, waiting for the going of the bride so that Revelations 11 can be fulfilled. The church age has ceased. The seals have been opened that prove what they left out in the church age. And the message has been given. Israel is the scene. Hallelujah. Ready. Where are the beasts of trumpets? Oh, you men in other lands, or you'll hear this tape. Can't you wake up, my brother? Or does it blind you? Would you throw it out and call it false prophecy when it's vindicated right before you by the world, by the time, by the peoples, by the Holy Spirit who wrote it? It's vindicated both naturally, spiritually, materially, 
everything that he said is fulfilled and proven. Israel in her land. Drove them in there. Herded them in there like sheep. The wolves got after her. Run back to safety to their own land. Remember, Israel was only promised to be blessed as long as she was in her land. God never blesses Israel outside of the land. Abraham went outside the land was condemned. Everyone that leaves the land is condemned. God only can bless Israel when she stays in her homeland. And she's there now as a nation. And the church is called. She's just only waiting for the rapture of the bride taken out. The seals are open. It's revealed to us. We see what they left off. You don't want to debate and fuss about the serpent seed and water baptism and so forth. You're blinded and don't know it. The God of this world has blinded you to it. And you don't know it. I wonder I had such a time this morning fighting through them pressures so that their prophets can be revealed in this last day. Can't do it through the trumpet of the beast of the trumpets. He said through Hosea, I have hewed. Watch, Israel he's talking to. I have hewed. I, or in other words, I have chopped, chopped them out through the prophets. That's how God does his people. He chopped them out from the rest of the nation. Amen. What man? His two-edged sword. Amen. His word. He chopped them. Amen. His nation from the nations. He chopped his nation from the nations by the prophets, his vindicated word. So has he chopped his bride from the denominations Amen. by his word. Amen. <laughs> Promised by Malachi 4. In the last day, chopped out his bride, hewed her from the rest of the churches. Hewed out his bride, chopped out his prophets. With his prophets, the word chopping Israel, separate yourself from the rest of them. Look at when they wanted to act like the rest of them. They came to the prophet Samuel. He said, have I ever took your money? Have I ever spoke to you anything in the name of the Lord? But what happened? They said, no, that's, that's right, but we still want a king. That's the way the churches is dead. Oh, we believe the word, it's all right, but, you know, that we say we should do this. I don't care what they say, the word is right. Amen. Waiting. He's chopped them out through the prophets. What time is it, brother? What time is it, minister? Do you see the time of the day and the sign you're living under? Can you understand it? Do you see it? Everywhere now, no revival. Everybody's complaining. Ministers crying. I was reading one of the outstanding papers that comes here to the church, a very fine paper. I know the editor and I know the people. They're godly people. Very fine. Brother Sister Moore of the Herald of His Coming. One of the finest papers on the field, Herald of His Tummy. But they hardly will print anything unless it's about fast, pray, fast, pray, sound a trumpet. You, how many reads it? You know, you see it all the time. Fast, pray, fast, pray. It's all you hear. Fast, pray. We're going to have a great break of the day. There's a great thing going to happen. All of you pray, pray, pray. We're not too late yet. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? They want a great awakening. They're crying, believing that they will be awakened. They're good people. Why is it? What have they done? They have not recognized the awakening of the bride. See? By being a Christian, they feel the pull of the hour, but they haven't recognized what's been done. Amen. That's what's making them feel that way. They know something's supposed to happen. But see, they're looking for it way off in the future to come when it's already happened right by you. That's the same thing they did in the old days. They believed in the coming Messiah. They believed that there'd be a forerunner come. But it was right on them and they didn't know it. They didn't recognize it. They believed there would come a forerunner. They would forerun the Messiah. And they cut his head off. And kill their Messiah. Because it was prophesied that they'd be blinded. Hosea said so in the same spirit. 
I spoke through Hosea, I spoke through John, and said the church in this last days would be naked and blind. Amen. And would put him outside of the church. <laughs> they failed to see those prophecies fulfilled. But being in there, they realize that something has got to happen. They just don't get it. They don't realize it. Much like the Jews of old times, lying in Laodicea, riches, theology, hostile with the church, hostile towards the message. Look how hostile those Jews was with John. Look how hostile they was with Jesus. When he was the very one that they claimed that they were looking for. I believe we brought a fuse. <laughs> I suppose that cuts the tape recorders off too. It doesn't. All right. They were hostile towards the message. What happens is that so much momentum. Each one of you all are a heating unit. There's no way to keep the church perfectly normal in those, under those times because, you see, each one of you are 98 BTUs normally. And you just don't sit there like that. You're constantly putting out heat. There's enough air in here now to freeze the place up. But with a heating unit going forth, you, you can't do it. Notice, hostile. But now, like the Jews of old, blinded, they're at Lady Osea. They're naked, miserable, wretched, and don't know it. Day of riches. Great theological teachings. Great education. And now, they have become hostile towards the message. They want nothing to do with it. Just like it was back in the days when Jesus of Nazareth was on earth. The reason people in Noah's day did not go into the ark because they never recognized the message nor the messenger. That's the only reason they perished is because they didn't recognize the hour that they were living. They didn't recognize that God would deal with sin as he promised he would. He'd destroy a man from the face of the earth. He had prophesied it. He meant it. And he means it today the same as he did then. But the people, instead of being favorable towards Noah, he was considered a wild man. They didn't believe him to be a prophet. You know, Jesus in his own self told us how they scoffed in the days of Noah. Made fun of him. Called him a fanatic and what more. But they didn't recognize their hour. They didn't recognize the day. They didn't recognize the sign. They didn't recognize the message. They didn't recognize the messenger. But put him from their midst and laughed at him. Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah. With Israel in her land and everything setting down, the message is just perfectly moving in. What day are we living, brother? Where are we at? They didn't know the day. They didn't know that's the reason they missed it. It's because they didn't recognize it. They were like the day, like, somewhat like the people today, blinded by scientific proofs, by educational systems, by theological seminary, and things that blinded them in that day. It's done the same thing today. It's blinded them again. And also, the simplicity, simplicity of the message and the messenger. Noah wasn't scientific. He wasn't an educated man. He was a poor farmer, humble, with a simple message. It was too simple for their high learning. So is it today. God always makes it simple to get the people who will believe and trust him. It's a different, just a different message, but the same God. I want you to believe it and understand that God has spoken. Jesus said they scoffed at his prophet Noah. And as they scoffed in that day, so will they do it again at his coming. They would do the same thing. That's the reason that Pharaoh drowned in the sea. He never recognized his day. He never recognized what was going on. He was too tuck up in the achievements of his scientific age to build cities with slave labor. He was, too, he was too busy to recognize the opportunity that he had. And he turned God's prophet messenger out into the wilderness. He didn't recognize it. 
That's the reason that if things went the way they did. He never recognized it. If he would have only recognized the promised word of God to that people, and if the churches today would only recognize, if the churches would only recognize the word of God that's made this promise for this hour to the people, they wouldn't perish. If America could only recognize the Constitution that she drawn up, she wouldn't be willing to take Bibles out of the schools, take the name of God off of coins, and pledge allegiance under God. But she doesn't recognize it. Why? She's blind, naked. She can't recognize the blood of those precious boys that's died on the fields for this privilege. They're forgotten. They're dust. But there's one who does remember. Amen. The shed of the blood of the prophets. Amen. The cost that it taken to bring this gospel to us today. How the thousands have been eaten by lions and thrown into the dens, have been sawed asunder, burnt, crucified. God recognizes it. The church has forgot their prophets. They don't need them anymore, they claim. But God knows he's got to have them. He uses people by his word. But it's too old-fashioned to them in this day. They don't recognize it. That's the reason they're in the condition they are. That's the reason they're naked, miserable, blind, wretched. Don't know it because they don't recognize the hour that we're living. They don't know it. Moses, he recognized his day and his calling. When he saw the promise of God's word for that day vindicated, he knew then and realized what he was and what he's to do by the promised word. So he didn't fear what anybody said. He wasn't ashamed of his message. Though every priest and every payroll, everything, every authority disagreed with him. But he recognized when he saw that light, that pillar of fire hanging in that bush. I spoke to him the word that was promised for that day and said, I've called you to go do it. He feared not the, the great threats of the king. He went down to bring those people to an exodus like the word of God had promised. Seeing the promise vindicated, he made the people ready for their exodus. When? When he saw the promise of God vindicated. Remember, he run with his theology. He run with his training. But when he saw the word of God made manifest, he saw it vindicated. I am that I am. Then he didn't care what anybody said. He didn't fear what Pharaoh would do with him. He didn't fear what the rest of them would do. He only feared God, that he might misunderstand God. Or some way that he might misunderstand God. He didn't fear the people and what they would say or what they would do. Amen. He only feared God. After he recognized that it was the word of God. He couldn't understand how a man like him would be sent down there. But when he recognized by the vindicated word what it was, then he didn't fear the king's commandments. If he'd only recognize, if we today could only recognize Moses recognized it when he seen the word vindicated. Then the vindication made prove he was ready for the exodus for the people. Job never recognized that it was God. As long as the devil can, can make you believe sometime that the little trials you go through is, is God may, punishing you. It was God trying to show you something. Job never recognized it until he saw a vision. Like Moses. Moses saw the vision, the pillar of fire in the bush was vindicated. And when Job and his question, if a man dies, can he live again? I see a tree die and it lives again. I see a flower dies and it lives again. That was his question, but man lay it down. He giveth up the ghost, he wastes away. His sons come to mourn and he perceive it not. Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave until thy wrath be passed. He couldn't understand why a flower would die and live again. A leaf would go off of a tree down and lay on the ground and come back again in the spring. He said, man, lay it down. 
And where does he go? I believe God. But what happens to a man? And then one day, the lightning begin to flash. The thunders begin to roar. The Spirit come upon the prophet. And he saw the coming of a man who could put his hand upon a sinful man and a holy God and bridge the way. Then he screamed, I know my Redeemer. Amen. Though the skin worms destroy his body, yet in my flesh I'll see God. He recognized what the resurrection was. Balaam never recognized the angel until the mule spoke in tongues. Balaam could not recognize that angel was standing in his way, a blinded preacher. Could not recognize that it was God standing in the way trying to keep him from selling his gift for money. And when the mule spoke in a human voice, then Balaam recognized that it was the angel standing in his way trying to keep him from doing what he's doing. Oh, you blinded denominations! If God can use a mule that's dumb to speak in a language that he doesn't know to reveal to the minister that he's out of the way, can he use a man to do the same thing? Blinded people. If Ahab had only recognized his day, he would have never condemned the prophet Micah with the word of God of promise to him. When Ahab stood there that day, him and, and Jehoshaphat, and when they had 400 prophets out there prophesying, saying, go up, everything's all right. Ahab, you're living in sin. You made us great denomination. We're a great people. We're a great ministry. Here we are. We're 400 trained uh, priests or prophets. We are 400 trained in the Word and theology. We know all about it. So now it proved they didn't know all about him. The man that they called a crazy man in the generation before him. Elijah, the true prophet of God, had prophesied, Thus saith the Lord. The dogs will lick your blood in. Yeah. But those priests, man-made prophets, thought they had it all fixed up just right. They said, Father Abraham, or Father Ahab, go up. The Lord's with you. You've got the Scripture because God gave this land to Israel. It belongs to Israel. Go up. The Lord is with you. Oh, my. But you know, Jehoshaphat, one that hadn't mingled in sin like Ahab had, he saw things a little different. He said, isn't there another one? He said, we got one here, but I hate him. See, what was God doing? Chopping his people out with a prophet again. I hate him. He doesn't do nothing but just condemn me all the time. And you know I'm a great man. I wouldn't have this seminary down here if I wasn't a great believer. I've got well-trained men. I sit them down there with books and Bibles and everything else to teach this. And I know they're a great man. But if Ahab had only recognized who that guy was, this poor little ragged-looking fellow, the son of England, standing there telling, Thus saith the Lord. He'd have never made that fatal mistake that he made. But he condemned Micah. He never did. Oh, people recognize the age that you're living in. Look what's happened. Look what's promised. Recognize the day that you're living. If a church denomination today could only recognize why they are being condemned and their members are fleeing from them, like Israel out of Egypt, if the denominations had only quit condemning those tapes and would listen to them, you preach or listen to this tape. You listen. If you only recognize the hour that you're living, if you only recognize the sign of the time, you'd see while the people are running from them denominations, the Spirit of the Lord calling. No man can come to me, said Jesus, except my Father draws him, and all that the Father has in past times given me will come. Like the little woman at the well and the priest, how different it was. The handwriting is on the wall of today again. They see it, but they don't recognize it. If the Jews only had recognized the promised sign of their Messiah according to their last prophet, Malachi 3 said, Behold, I send my messenger before my face and shall prepare the way. And they claimed they were looking for him. What, a, what exactly a parallel to, to, to today. They claim they're looking for something to happen. The churches are all praying and fasting. 
and saying, now let us pray. Let us get together. We've got to have a great thing to happen. We know there's something great to happen. The church has got to get ready. That's what they're praying about. That's what they're praying about there. And there come John the Baptist because he rejected their seminaries, because he did contrary to what their fathers has taught. He came out of the wilderness without education. He came out without his collar turned around, as it would be said today. He come out without a big bunch of theology. But he come knowing by the promise of God that he was to announce the Messiah. He said, he's standing in your midst now. And they thought he was crazy because he didn't come from their schools. The handwriting was on the wall and they didn't know it. They claimed they were looking for such a person to come and he was right among them. And they didn't recognize him. Though they said they were looking for him. Just as similar as the Jews that they're in as the Gentiles that they're in. Because it's prophesied the same thing. Same thing. Claim they were looking for him. But the denominations now in the Gentile Lady Osea age is just as blind as they were. Because why? It's prophesied they would be. It must come to pass. If Israel only could have recognized their sign, they would have known the time of the Messiah's appearing was at hand. If they had recognized, you know, the, the disciples said that to Jesus, why does the scribe say that Elias must first come? And Jesus said, Elias has already come, and they didn't know him. He's already been here, and they've already killed him and done just exactly what the Scripture said they'd do. If they don't only recognize that that fanatic, that condemned every double thing that they'd done, that condemned everything that they were doing, he said, you hypocrites don't begin to snakes in the grass. You generation of vipers! <laughs> Who's warned you to flee from the wrath that's to come? Don't begin to think within yourself, we have Abraham to our father, we have this other, for I tell you, God's able of these stones to rise, children to Abraham. Don't begin to think that you've got the world council at your hand and you've got the best dressed members of it. God's able of alley rats out here to rise up to fulfill his order. Prostitutes, streetwalkers, drunkards, gamblers. He's able to do it. He's still God. Blinded denomination. Like blinded Israel. Both prophesied to be that way. I'm showing you parallels. They'll get to this spot that I want to now. Blinded as the, the denominations of the Gentiles. Of the Lady of Sia age are blinded today like they were then. The Lady of Sia age is supposed to receive... A message? Malachi 4 said they would. But what are they looking for? Our denomination will produce it. And it doesn't come through us, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, the, the assemblies, the oneness. Or so. uh, if we don't produce it, it isn't true. Same thing they did in that day. And it come and went and they didn't know it. They didn't recognize it, though it fulfilled every word. Jesus said they have did as it was listed if they do. So will they do the Son of Man. It'd be rejected. Now notice. Same now in the Gentile days, according to the promised scriptures of Malachi 4, which Jesus said, all scripture is inspired. And not one bit of it can keep from being fulfilled. There's no way to keep the scripture from being fulfilled. All must be fulfilled. And Jesus said it would happen. And here we see it's happened. We see it. Restore what? In this last days, you denominational brethren, listen. Restore the Pentecostal original feast like it was at the beginning. So will it be restored before Israel's trumpet's feast shall sound. It has to be restored. There has to be something to do it. Malachi 4 said it would restore back the faith of the fathers to the children. What would take place? If Israel had to recognize their Messiah, promised sign, they wouldn't have been where they are today. If they, but why didn't they do it? It's pitiful. Why didn't they do it? Because God said they wouldn't do it. How many believe that? Say amen. amen. God said they wouldn't do it. And it's the same God has said in Lady Osea Church age, this would happen. Amen. And here it is before them. How can they do anything but do it? They only recognize the promised sign of the Messiah. 
the sign of the Son of Man. He come in the name of the Son of Man. Now, he was in the name through the Pentecostal age, the Holy Spirit, Son of God. Now the next thing is the millennium, the Son of David. Three sons, same God. Same Father, Son, Holy Ghost, same God. Son of David, Son of God, Son of David, Son of Man, Son of God is the same God. All the time, just in three different office works. So is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, not three gods, but the same God. And three dispensations, three office works, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But like today, traditional blinded, like they was then, traditionally blinded, they don't see it. Why can't they see it? They never will see it. Remember, that's thus saith the Lord. Say, so why are you saying it then? It's the same as John did. It's in the rest of it. Is. There's one sticking here and there. It's got to be brought out. Oh, sheep of God, hear the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice. The woman at the well recognized her day by the sign of the Messiah. She was in a bad shape. She didn't want to fool them old uh, churches the way they were doing. They were living every way and things they were doing. She didn't believe in that stuff. But she knew there would come one one day. The poor little fellow up there on the way to the well, she found that thing that she was looking for. When he began to reveal to her the secret of her heart, told her the sin that she was living in, she said, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Now, they hadn't had one for 400 years. But I perceive that you're a prophet, and I know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. He said, I'm he. She recognized it with no more question. How can you prove it? It's already proved. When Messiah cometh, this is what he'll do. Well, if she can recognize it by the Scriptures, can't we recognize the evening lights? And the sign of today, we know when Messiah cometh, he'll show us all these things. He'll tell us this. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. No more question. Away she went. And she told the people, come see, here he is. No more question to her. It was settled because she recognized the day that she was living in. She recognized it. So did Nathaniel, a great Hebrew. When he saw that sign of the Messiah that was promised there, no matter how many priests, how many anything else, what did it do? It disturbed the priest to see them people leaving the churches and going. He said, if any of you attend his meeting, you'll be excommunicated. We'll put you right out of the denomination. Amen. So is it today. We'll put you out of our organization if you attend his meeting. Remember the blind man? The father and mother couldn't even answer this afraid because they said anybody went to see Jesus or, or attended his meetings, they would be excommunicated. But that blind man could speak for himself. He that was once blind could then see. I who was once blind can now see. I who didn't know these things has been made known to me by the Holy Spirit. Turn loose denominations. Amen. Because they're coming anyhow. Amen. If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Nathaniel recognized it. He knew it. Just as Moses, scriptural proofs, vindicated word, Moses knew that that was the promise of the day because it was scriptural. No matter how strange, he said, who can I tell him? I tell him I saw a light back here in the wilderness. How can I tell him now that there was a light back here? This light told me, go down there. He said, surely, Moses, I'll be with you. And not only... He didn't show himself down in Egypt just only by miracles and signs. But when he got them all gathered together, he appeared to them again and vindicated Moses' ministry before the elected and called out. When that prophet had chopped them loose from that nation and brought them into a place, then the pillar of fire appeared again and on top of Mount Sinai. Parallel it with the day. Amen. Praise be to God, it's more than life to me. Amen. My age begins to creep on, and I see the hour of vulgarity and immorality sweeping the lands and things. Then I look back and see what's happened. My heart leaps for joy, knowing that after a while this earthly tabernacle of habitation will be dissolved. But I got one waiting out here. I'm trying to pull up people, chop them from these things and things to pull them out to show them by the scriptures that God standing there with the vindication of the pillar of fire, which hundreds and thousands have seen and even had it tucked before with a camera, time after time to prove it. Impersonators rise up. Sure, it's got to be done. Impersonators rose up in the day of Moses and done the same thing. God said, separate yourself, Moses. Don't hang around them. I'll swallow them up. And the world got them. And so is it today. 
go right back in the world, money schemes and everything else. And Moses' scriptural sign. He was, he was that great prophet of God that went down there to deliver him. And they recognized it. They recognized the sign. He was the exact scriptural promise vindicated. Jesus was that promise of the scripture vindicated to the woman. Or he was the interpretation. Jesus was the interpretation of the scripture. His own life interpreted the scripture. Don't you see the message of the hour? Can you recognize where we are? The message itself from the scripture interprets to you the hour we're living in. It's the interpretation. Jesus said to Israel, if you had only have known your day. One time sitting on Mount Olives, he looked over, said, Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem. He wept. He looked down and he seen, not in any comparison, maybe way the other night, or the morning about 10 o'clock, I saw that prostitute church. Down in your heart you feel the Holy Spirit dropping tears. Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, how often I have hovered you. But what did you do? You killed the prophets that are sent to you. You murdered them. And the messages that's been sent to the church today has been murdered by their denominational dogmas. The scripture has been murdered by their dogmas. Jesus said, if you'd only know it's your day, but it's too far now, it's too late now, so is it with the churches. I do believe with all my heart she's past redemption. Amen. No matter what you want to think about it, your own opinion, this is mine. You don't have to have my opinion. But I believe she's past redemption has been for the past five or six years. I remember, you remember Chicago. Watch what's happened since then and watch it keep on happening. Remember, my name is before it. It's stuck out there. It's thus saith the Lord. Amen. This year hasn't dropped, continue. Look at 1933, how I'd say the women had acted in this last days. I said to people, how in Bussolania, how he'd come to his end, how Hitler would come to a mysterious end, how that the three-ism would come in communism, how that the machines would come looking like an egg, and how women would wear garments that look like man, even like they're underneath clothes, and would finally come to putting fig leaves like on them. How the immoral act, how they would act in this day. Look what they've done. You know, it's right before you. Then. If Christian women could only, uh, so-called Christian women could only recognize, could recognize that the immoral spirit upon them is of the devil. To make them cut their hair. The devil's the only thing to do that. That's contrary to God's word for you. It's like it was in the Garden of Eden. What did they, if they could only recognize, they try to say, oh, that little holy roller preacher saying, it's not me. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm only quoting the word. If they could only recognize it's a devil. They call themselves Christians. Jesus said, how can you call me Lord and do not the things that I say to do? They can't be Christian. I'm not their judgment. I'm just saying what the Word says. How can you call me Lord and then do not the things I said to do? And the whole Word here is a revelation of Jesus Christ. How do you call me Lord? If they can only recognize it's a devil. An immoral spirit. Some nice little women out there. I think this is the most vulgar place I've ever seen in my life. Jeffersonville, Indiana, for naked women. I've been in Hollywood. I've been everywhere. I've been the world over. And I've seen all kinds of filth. I've seen it in Paris. I've seen it in England, which is the chief of all of them. I think that England will be sunk someday beneath the ocean. It deserves it. Filth, dirt, puny. That's the immoral cesspool of the world. The most descriptional denying people I've ever seen in my life. She's become that. Because she's rejected the truth. Billy Graham said he had to take his wife out of the parks. Sexual things going on between men and women, boys and girls, right out in the park. Openly. She'd become a cesspool. So is France. So is all the rest of the world. And so has the United States. Becoming the leader of all of them. Look at today. Make them cut their hair. Wear shorts. Slacks. Smoke. And calling themselves Believers. Don't you realize, sister, or woman, me, pardon, not my sister, do a thing like that. Don't you realize it's the devil? But what, like the Jews of old, you will not believe the vindicated word when it's proved to you? You hang right on.
to your denominational traditions that says it's all right. You're speaking tongues, you jump up and down, you sing in the Spirit and cut your hair. Could you imagine a Christian doing that? I've seen devils, I've seen witch doctors, I've seen them speak in tongues and interpret and jump up and down and dance in the Spirit. Drink blood out of a human skull and curse the name of Jesus Christ. You say, I belong to the church. Hallelujah, glory to God. I, you belong to what? The church is the Word. And the Word says it's a shame for you to do it. You blinded bunch of Pharisees leading them poor children to hell like that because you're afraid of the meal ticket. And you'll be turned out of your denomination if you start something about it. Shame on you, you hypocrite. Amen. Hallelujah. You're ashamed of seeing the hour approaching like this and you turn by your traditions away from the Word of God. How dare you blinded one? Don't the Bible say you were blinded? Can't you understand that you're blind? The Bible said you was and you are naked. Miserable, wretched, blind and don't know it. When you think you got the biggest church in the city and you do this, that, the other, and the Bible said you're poor as you can be. And you're blind. And he's still standing at the door trying to sell you some Isaiah. Not sell it to you, but give it to you. And you won't receive it. Fulfills the scripture. What day are you living, people? Do you recognize the hour? Recognize the sign? They can only realize I'm winning. And that's the devil. It's the indecent devil. In the name of religion. He's always been that way. He come to every prophet. He come to every sage. He even come to Jesus Christ as a religious person. And the Bible said he'd be so close in the last days, even Pentecostals, and would deceive the very elected out of that Pentecostal church if it was possible. You, he said, go straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and but few there will be that will find it. For as it was in the days of Noah, where even eight souls were saved, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Think of it. What day are we living? Do you recognize the hour? Recognize the day? I'm taking a lot of your time, but i got a few more minutes. <laughs> Making them to cut their hair. Well, they say, our church don't pay attention to that. You know why? They're blind. It's no harm to cut your hair. The Bible says it is. It's even an undecent thing for you to even cut your hair and even pray. You say, well, a woman should be covered. And the Bible said that her hair is her covering, not a hat, her hair. Amen. What if Moses said, I'll take off my hat instead of my shoes? They wouldn't work. God said shoes. Amen. God meant shoes. He said hair, not hat. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. All right. You like that, I'm sure. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. He means just what he says. The scripture of no private interpretation. Doesn't mean just for your denomination. It means just what it says and he's the interpreter. I know a woman that does that. I don't care what you know. I know what God said about it. You suit yourself. They can only recognize what it is, lady. You can only recognize. Or woman, not lady. I seen a sign coming down from the blue board down on a beast fifth street there, some beer parlor, said tables for ladies. I just stopped right and said, you never did have one. A lady won't go in such a place. A woman might, but not a lady. Did you notice the fall of the world begin with the immorality of a woman? Did you know it's the end the same way? Immorality of the woman and the church represents is by the woman? The church is a woman, spiritually speaking? So is the bride a woman, spiritually speaking? The immorality of the church, what it's done. Look at the visions, look at the things. See the visions, even that God gives. And that vision is true. I have my Bible over my heart to you people on tape. The audience can see it. I saw that. God Almighty knows that's the truth. Never known it till just now. There she is naked. And don't know it. She was just having her a great time. There you are, but that little bride coming to you. It was different. The Alpha and Omega. The devil does it. But like the Jews of old, when they see the word, and Jesus said, Do you hear, he said this to his disciples, search the scriptures. You're, you know, you're puzzled about me and my ministry. Search the scriptures. 
in them you think you have eternal life, and they testify of me. They tell you what my message is. If you can't believe me, believe the very words that God's interpreted to you. We'll not have this man rule over us. We got our own priests and so forth. Go ahead then. That's all can be said. It's too late anyhow. Hmm? The denominational tradition that says it's okay, they listen to that. Now, brother, here, you believe the, the word of a man more than you believe the word of God. They don't recognize. The churches today don't recognize 2 Timothy 3. If you, I see somebody putting the scriptures down. I, these are scriptures I'm quoting from right here. Or if anybody ever called my attention, I, or my hand on it, I can show them the scripture for us. They don't recognize 2 Timothy 3. Where it said in the last days, man would be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are good, the bride. See? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For this is the kind that will go from house to house and lead silly women, silly women, led away with divers' lust, never learning or never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Never they wouldn't do it, and they won't do it. God said so in blind piracy, can't you see it? I'm not angry, I'm just driving an alien and clinching it. Neither does the churches recognize this. The women can't understand it. They're supposed to silly women. Led away with divers' lust. Hollywood. All this kind of stuff. Bobbed hair, wearing shorts, wearing makeup. All this kind of stuff, which is unbecoming. You know the women plays a great part in the last days? You know the Bible said that those who escaped out of this great damnation would be a beautiful branch before the Lord? Amen. Someday I'll get to it, the Lord willing, for, for you women. Let you see what God thinks of the woman that really escaped this damnation of this day. That she'd be beautiful. I heard a woman the other day laughing at a girl, a bunch of half-naked females with morals lower than a, than a mother dog, laughing at an old woman with a long dress. Listen here, you little twisted up female. She's got something you know nothing about. She's got morals. You don't even know what the name is. You lost in the cradle almost. You don't even know right from wrong. She does. She's got something hid in her heart that you don't know nothing about. You lost it. can never find it. Amen. She would call her old-fashioned, so forth like that. She knows something that you don't know nothing about. She's got hid in her heart treasure of decency. You don't know one word of it. Your mammy brought you up like that. Your pastor permitted it. Shows where he stands. Amen. I'm preaching about him right here now. See where you at? <laughs> the churches. Jesus said, all oh, this scripture must be fulfilled. And it is fulfilled. Notice, as Jambres and Jambres also, we stood Moses. You come right along, some of them, not, now he's not talking about Methodist Baptist here. They're out of the picture. But as Jambres and Jambres, we stood Moses and Aaron. So will they, men of reprobated mind concerning the truth, been perverted, into dogmas and teachings of the church instead of the Bible. And then Jambres and Jambres could do anything that Moses could do. See? As Jambres, see the parallel there? As Jambres and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these men of reprobate mind concerning the truth. Resist it. Won't have it in their neighborhood. Won't even cooperate with it. Won't have nothing to do with it. But so their folly will be made known when that bride takes her stand and moves up into the skies. Don't be made no one, no one. Like Moses when he took the children of Israel and took the flight out of Egypt, and Egypt sunk. All right. Jesus said that all Scripture is given by inspiration. Therefore, that all Scripture must be fulfilled. When he they asked him, said, you make yourself God. He said, you in your own law call those prophets who the word of the Lord came to, you call them gods, and they are. So then... How can you condemn me when I say I'm the Son of God? All these scriptures is given by inspiration. All of it must be made manifest. All of it must be fulfilled. See, they're, they're just so blind. They're so took up with the word of man instead of being taken up with the word of God. That's what makes women do that. That's what makes preachers do that. They're taken up with a bishop instead of Jesus. They're taken up in it with, their, with their money bag. A big congregation. You see how they're unpopular. 
Take the people out of Jeffersonville. Well, what little group is here from Jeffersonville? Take the outsiders of Jeffersonville out of this tabernacle this morning. I wouldn't have her have a half a dozen to preach to. What is it? She's made up of all over the country. From New York, from Massachusetts to Boston, Maine, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, and around the country. They're gathering together. Amen. What is it? It shall be like about the evening time. They can't recognize the evening light. That's what's the matter. She just doesn't recognize it. She's too blind. The Bible said she was. Russia only received her place in the world in science no more than about 40 years ago. You know, when the First World War come on, they they ignored Russia. Brother Roy is just a bunch of ignoramuses. The old Siberians that beard all over their face and didn't know right and left hand. That's right. Russia. But she recognized her place. She had to do it to fulfill the scripture. You know, my prophecies of what I said would happen. How all of them are gathering in communism. Now she leads the world in science. We're way back behind her. All the rest of the world's behind her. She leads her place. She just recognized. She had some brains too. Notice. Man has the same six senses he had 6,000 years ago. 6,000 years ago, with the senses he had, he contacted his earthly home and served God. And now, in the past 75 years, that man has come from a horse and buggy to an astronaut. Why? He turned away from his faith in God and turned it over to his senses and his abilities. As a human being. Did you notice it? He quit trusting God. He trusts himself. Like this infidel woman. What's her name? Washington there. Changed all this. What's her name? Murray. She says, as long as we got an army and navy, we don't need old Jehovah. I don't care what we got. It's Jehovah or nothing to me. Yeah. Let army and navy sink and it will. But Jehovah will remain forever. As long as I'm a part of him and his son, I shall remain with him forever. Amen. Not by my calling or my choice, but by his choice. Amen. 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 Nothing to do with it. He is the one. Give me him or give me death. Amen. Let the nations rise and fall. Jehovah will remain. He's done it all through the ages when Rome fell and Egypt fell and all the rest of them fell and he still remains Jehovah. Oh, hallelujah. I feel religious. Amen. <laughs> Reason Russia come to herself, she had to. Just like Israel had to get in the homeland. God had to drive Israel back to the homeland for the trumpets, and so did God have to drive Russia up there in communism to do exactly what's been prophesied she'd do. Man in his six senses had just come along with horse and buggy, trusting God. In the last 75 years, he quit trusting God. When they signed the Constitution of the United States, they put God in everything they did. Now they don't even have a meeting, and they never even name his name. That's right. They depend on their loftiness of their science, they, their cunningness of their science. A lewd bunch. That's exactly right. The whole world is swallowed up in ignorance of the Bible. The, Bible, the whole world is turned from God. But to think right out of the midst of all that and the church denominations and all their seminary lewdness and everything, God has tucked his prophet's word and chopped down a bride. Say he would do it. Viewed from that thing what he promised he would do. They depend on their human intelligence, their human science, and so forth. Left God out. Who he once trusted in the United States has left God out. They even turned him out of school. Or our little children can't even hear about him. They turned him out of school. Now they're trying to turn him off the dollars. In God we trust. They're going to turn it out of the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, one nation under God. They're going to turn that out. See, they went to their own feelings and their own senses. Because in the last 75 years, he hasn't changed a bit in his senses. He's still the same man God created him in the beginning. But in this last days, can't you recognize where we are? And the church has turned from God to that. To the seminary and experience and so forth, instead of the Word. Don't even recognize them in their meetings, in their schools, or nothing anymore. Israel, in the past 25 years, has recognized something has brought 
them to the homeland as was promised. They don't know how it was ever done. They suffered like everything, more than them under them trumpets. But they're in their homeland. They don't know why. Why did Russia wake up? Why did the nations wake up? Why has man been able to achieve when scientists 300 years ago, a French scientist, rolled a ball at a certain speed across the earth and proved by scientific research if a man ever made the terrific speed of 30 miles an hour, gravitation take him off the earth according to his weight, according to the weight of the ball. Now he's going 17,000 miles an hour. Still trying to climb on. He just recognized that lately. Why? It has to be that way. Why the church used to stood on the rock of Jesus Christ, no matter what anybody said, they stayed right with that word, the message of the hour, Luther, Wesley, and now through there, and now they turn back to tradition. Why has it done it? Past 25 years, Israel has just recognized that they're in the homeland for something. It was prophesied they'd have to be gathered again. Hosea said so. We read a while ago. God help us to understand it. All right. At the same time, the bride has recognized the evening light. Just begin to recognize. The hungry Pentecostals have begun to recognize that them organizations hasn't got anything they're looking for. They're so twisted and tore up. See, it's a time of recognition. Recognition. You've got to recognize. The world's recognized. The nations has recognized. Science has recognized. The devil has recognized. It's a time that he can wreck women, wreck the church, wreck the people. He's recognized it. And God has recognized that there is a people on earth that he predestinated to life. He recognized this is the time to send his message. He did it. The people has recognized it. The bride time has realized the evening light. If Sodom had recognized her days, when she seen those messengers come down like Billy Graham and Oral Roberts, now some lewd person, Phoenix just got up and said, played that part on the a tape and said, I said, here, I must be baptized in Jesus' name. He said that. And then said, now you see here, we're here. He said, when I was talking about Africa, how they baptized three times space far and back, said, I said, don't make any difference. He never played the rest of the tape. Just that part and cut it off, which would be a penitentiary offense to do it. Them tapes are absolutely franchised. No one can mess with them. You better not. You've got the law on you. But would we do it? No. He said, let him alone. God told me what's going to take place. Just watch. Just keep your eye on that person. See? At the same time, the bride has realized the evening light. If Sodom would have recognized their hour. Now, this same person put on tape said, Look here, to you Pentecostal people, said, and you Baptists, this man, false prophet William Branham, has said that Oral Roberts and Billy Graham was in Sodom. See, they cut the tape off. That's all. See, wouldn't go ahead and say that they were messengers to Sodom. Not in Sodom, there, there is a messenger to Sodom. Anybody knows I said that? Play your tape. Whosoever shall take from or add to, the same shall be taken from him. It's the word of the Lord that stands that way. If Sodom had to recognize her messenger, she'd have been standing today, Jesus said. If she'd have recognized the same as Abraham recognized. Abraham knew there was a promised son coming, but he knew there had to be a change some way because he was too old and so was Sarah. But when he saw that one... <laughs> You can discern the thoughts of Sarah behind him. He recognized the hour he was living. He said, my Lord, let me fetch a little water here and wash your feet. Let me a morsel of bread. Let me pray thee. Hold on just a little bit longer. Here, my L-O-R-D, capital L-O-R-D, Elohim. He recognized that God was speaking to him out of human flesh. He recognized his sign and was blessed of the Lord. Sodom didn't recognize their day and was burned up. Jesus said, as it was in that day, so shall it be. When the Son of God, is, uh, the Son of Man, is being made manifest. Now the church has not recognized her day. Like Israel, forced back to Palestine, she is going to be forced into the world council of churches. Why? She didn't recognize her hour. People, come out of her. Be not partakers of her sin. Flee your life. Or you'll be caught with the mark of the beast and can't do nothing else about it. Let him that's filthy be filthy still. Let him that's holy, not will be holy, holy now. Let him that's holy. Not a bad bob-haired woman, she can't be. Now, that sounds very flat, but that's the scripture. 
The Bible says she dishonors her head, and her head is her husband. His head is Christ, so she dishonors Christ. How can she be dishonorable and not be filthy? She just got bobbed hair to keep it. Now, he she that wears shorts, keep on wearing them. Now, he that denies the word, keep on denying it. But let him that's holy be holy still. Yeah. Let him that's righteous be righteous still. The righteous word of God, the Son of God, made manifest. Be holy still. Righteous still. Recognize. Yes, sir. Days. Not the church has not recognized her days. Like Israel back in her promised land. She don't know how she got back there. She was just automatically put back there. Why? National force put her in her place. Now I'm going to say something. National force put Israel in her homeland. National force will put the church in the World Council of Churches. But the power of God will put the people in the bride. World forces this way and the world forces that way, but God forces upward. The Spirit of God, which is the Word of God, my Word is Spirit and life, will put the bride in her place because she'll recognize her position in the Word. And she's in Christ. Well, put her in her place. No national force will do it. But the national force did drive Israel to the homeland. The national forces of the council of churches will drive every organization into it. But the power of God will raise the bride into glory out of it. Oh, people, recognize your day. As Jesus warns you, a sign of Sodom and the church's conditions of this day. Look what he said in this day would take place. Listen to it real close. The sign of Sodom would take place in the day. Sign like Abraham, that day before Sodom has called out, all these things that was prophesied will be taking place now. Watch the day you're living. We went over and over. Now, he's promised to send you heavenly light to ripen the word seed that would be sown for this day. The seed is in here. The seed is the Bible. By Jesus said so. The word is the seed that a sower sowed. And now before you can have any crop, no matter if you sow the seed, it's got to have light to ripen that seed or it'll rot and won't do no good. It'll perish. But if it's got seed in the ground, the right ground, with the right kind of a sunlight on it, it's got to ripen. And he promised that in the last days, in the evening time, the sun would come out to ripen that seed. The seed is being preached. The Son of God is ripening that seed by vindicating it, making it push out before you and proving it is right. Do you get it? Recognize your day. I'm closing now. Time now to close. And the rich blinded, educated Laocian would put the word out of their midst. Have they done it? He said they would. As the prophets of old were sent to vindicate the promised word of their days so that the people who were predestinated of their days saw it like the woman at the well, like Nathan, like blind Barnabas, like Peter, and the rest of them who recognize it. He was that word. And the production, if I do not the works that the Father promised I do, then believe me not. But if I do the works so you don't believe me, believe them works. They tell you who I am. Get it? All right. Don't miss the day. Sent. Men and women of other days recognized it. Went in and were saved. Pentecostals, oh my, why don't you recognize your day? Recognize the day of the evening time. It is here. And it's here that to vindicate the coming of Christ, to vindicate it, we're at the end. Recognize your day. I know I've kept you a long time. It's 12 o'clock now. I like this food. Amen. Yeah. This is life. It is, it is to the believer. Recognize the day that you're living and the sign of the time. See where everything's at. Israel, where the church, where the immoral, where the bride's standing. What's that? Next thing, taking up of the bride. Of course, every church is looking for a great thing. The Pentecost, say, glory to God. There'll come a day that they're going to do this and they're going to do that. See, they are professors. 
They do believe. Like one time Caiaphas said, isn't it right that one man should die and not the whole nation perish? He was high priest, the Bible said, the reason he said that. He prophesied, not knowing what he was saying. But did he realize the real truth of it, that he was sacrificing the very God that he claimed to be the high priest of? So is the day they're looking out or somewhere for a, a great time to come while going to businessmen's convention and they say, glory to God, that preacher get up and just stir the crowd and say, there's coming a great revival, the hand of the Lord's going to be up on the earth and how the people are going forth running like, and don't realize that's under the trumpets for Israel. Why do they do it? It's because that they are Christian professors and don't realize. Neither did Chiasus has realized what he's doing. And they don't realize that they're rejecting the very message that's left to them. Amen. Amen. Right, right. Hey, every part of the scripture we went through day after day and week after week until it's indisputable the truth. Amen. If the blind can't receive it, Jesus said, let him alone. If the blind leads the blind, they all fall in the ditch. I don't know when. I don't know where. But I know it's coming. No, I see why Satan didn't want me to do this. Yesterday, I felt so bad, I couldn't get no word from the Lord. I did everything I know how to do, and I couldn't. And this morning when I got up, I had eaten me some corn yesterday, seen that laying right there in my stomach. I was so sick, I just, I just couldn't hardly get it. I thought, what in the world's the matter? I'm going down there, and I don't know what I'm going to say. Lord, I can't even find a scripture in my mind to write down. I can't find a thing. I just didn't know what to do. Then... As the message began to come to me, they kept saying, you feel too bad, your head's hurting, you're sick, you can't go down there, you can't stand there, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. I remember one time a story of a little cockney in England. He was just an ordinary man. And they said that the, the, the king, one of the kings in the early days, was going into his, his palace. and this, He had no one, he had a message he had to get for, the urgent message, because of the enemy. And so he... He said to this little fellow standing there, he said, Here, take this message, take this message. Hurry to a certain, certain place and command this to be done. And he said, Take my scepter in your hand. that will vindicate you that I'm, you're sent from me. And he stuck it under his robe and away he went. The guards everywhere stopped him. Everybody else yelled, Give away! I have the message of the king. <laughs> I have the king's messenger. A vindicated word. I thought, Satan, get out of my way! I have the king's message. I must go. One time, when they killed the prince of peace and put him in the grave and sealed up the tomb, and death held him for three days and nights, but on Easter morning, he had the supper in his hand. Lord, get away, death. Get away, grave. Open up. I am the king's message. I must come forth to prove this resurrection. I am the resurrection. Hallelujah, I feel real good now. Get the king's message. Let's recognize it, friends. For we are called to gather together for the sounding of the trumpet. For the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. He's gathered to Israel the three days. In the third day, he said he would do it. 2,700 years has passed. In that third day, he said he would gather them together, and he's done it. He said he'd make known the way of life. There you are, just waiting now for the bride to get out of the way so they can come. The two prophets, Hebrew prophets, that will recognize you. Remember me standing in Cairo to go up there when Louis Petra said, Brother Bram, did they ever see that? They believe the prophets. I said, it's a good thing for me to see how a man is. See the grace of God. I said, I'll read this New Testament. They read it. Louis sent them over a million over there. Brother Louis Petra from Sweden. They'd read it, come up down there, them Jews, not like this modern bunch of Jews, but in their homeland. They come down and he said, if this be the Messiah... Let us see him do the sign of the prophet. We'll believe it. Louis Petra said, Brother Bram, there is the opportunity. There is the opportunity. Someone told me that uh, it would be an opportunity. I got right, says, right down to it. Some man come over, said that Brother Argon Bright said, Brother Bram, that we're just a lot of Israel. Bring him out before him and show the sign of the prophet. They'll believe it. I said, Lord, here I am ready. Jumped on the plane, got the money in, got me a ticket, stopped in Cairo, said, Yeah, I'm ready. The Holy Spirit said, This is not your place. This is not your time. See? You get ahead of yourself. I thought, oh my, I'll come way over here. I'm, I'm going to go. Some said, stop right here. Don't you go that way. Turn on in India. Don't go that way. Go over to India. Don't you go here. Oh, why is I walked out behind the hangar? I said, Lord Jesus, what does this mean? Then he made, then he made known to me 
O oh, Gentile, these prophets are the one. It has to be according to the Scripture. Moses and Elijah has to come. And besides, the bride hasn't been taken out of the way yet. And prophets will return, and they'll do the sign of the prophet. That's the Scripture. And all is fulfilled then perfectly. Israel as a nation will be born in one day. Amen. The evening lights are shining. It shall be light about the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. In the waterway is the light today, buried in the precious name of Jesus. Young and old, repent of all your sins. The Holy Ghost will surely enter in. The evening lights have come. It is a fact that God and Christ are one. We're at the end time, friend. And we think of the song of the inspired writer. We said, nations are breaking. This is about 15 years ago. Israel's awakening, the signs that the prophets foretold, the Gentile days number, look at her filth now, with horrors and comfort, return, O oh, disperse to your own. The day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing for fear. Be filled with God's Spirit. Have your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up, your redemption is near. That's right. False prophets are lying. God's truth they're denying. Is that the truth? Yeah. Jesus the Christ is our God. They don't believe that. They got all kinds of isms and things. Praise the truth. But the prophet said, or the inspired writer said, we'll walk where the apostles have trod. Remember my vision? I said, if Paul's people goes in, so am I because I've done justice. Yeah. 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 stole their hands saying, we're resting on that. What recognize the day that we're living, the time we're living, the sign of the time that we're living in. It may be later than we think. One of these days, let him that's outside stay outside still. He that's inside must forever be inside still. The door will close. If there's some here this morning that has never walked in yet, oh, in Jesus' name, my dear people, don't look at this ignorant servant standing here. Illiterate, unlearned, uneducated. Don't look at that, but look at the word that's being proven. Look at the great Holy Spirit who vindicates it to be the truth. We're at the evening time. It's later than you think. Don't women let your hair grow, sister. Please take off them dirty clothes, throw them cigarettes away. For the hour will come that he that's filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that's righteous, let him be righteous still. He that's inside is inside. He that's outside is outside. The little close margin. If a righteous man will scarcely be saved, where will the sinner and the ungodly, the truth denier, you know, where will they be? Let us bow our heads. Now in the light of this hour that we're now living, the light of the day that we're now living in, precious and beloved one, you who come from different states, across the country. Let us now, and me with you on this altar, let us take inventory. How is the Spirit of God in our hearts today? Remember, it's that Spirit, uncondemned, uncontaminated, any church doctrine, everything's gone completely. You'd be daring to try to add to that or take from it. Or if you do try to put the interpretation on it yourself, your part's taken from the book of life. Are you trying to say something that the Spirit hasn't said? Are you trying to make it sound like it said something? Or are you just taking exactly what it says and leaving it like that? Are you splicing, cutting, taping, doing things that's not right? Have you say, well, I just don't feel like I should do this, or maybe I, uh, I know my church don't believe this. That's just one man's word about it. That one man is God. The Bible here says you should not cut your hair. These Bibles said that it shall come to pass that women will wear garments like man and how they would be an abomination to God, how the Holy Spirit spoke to this humble, unworthy vessel that just had to be standing present in the age that the great king said, here's my sepulcher, my word, here's my scepter, rather. Take my scepter and go forth and bring the message. I know the denominations try to stop it and turn it out and run it out and kick it out and everything. But by the grace of God, I'm on my road. 
screaming from nation to nation, from place to place, from church to church. Come out of it! It's unpopular, but it's the truth. Will you receive it in the, in the, the spirit that it's wrote in? Will you receive it in the spirit that it's been given in? If you haven't as yet, no room for an altar. Your heart is the altar. Would you raise up your hand and say, God, be merciful to me. Let the Spirit of God come into me, condemning me now of all my sins and frustrations, all my bad habits and high tempers and fusses and fights and stews and everything I've had. And I know something that my spirit isn't mellow for heaven. Make me mellow, Lord, in this last moment. This may be the last sermon I'll ever hear. This may be the last time I'll ever hear the message. I raise my hand. God, be merciful to me. God bless you. Dozens of hands. Now, just for a moment of silent prayer for you, you who raise your hand, shows you're still interested. Looks to me like the Spirit's still calling to someone. Dear God, Thou who knows all things, and you made all things for the purpose of all things, for some had to be condemned, some had to be blinded, some, like the potter, that made the vessel, as Paul said, one to honor and the other to dishonor. The one that was made to dishonor was only to show forth the one that was to be honored. But isn't it in the hand of the potter to do what he will? Isn't it in the predestinated plan of God to call who he for knew he is called? Them who he called he justified, and those who he justified he has glorified? Maybe some of them here today is like the little woman at the well, off in filth, off in unbelief, off in traditions of man, man-made doctrines. Maybe the first time they've ever heard these things, but something is strangely worn in their hearts. As many, many hands went up, Lord, let the great potter take that vessel now, mold it into a vessel of honor. I believe there's some reason, Lord, that they wouldn't be doing that. They wouldn't be saying that. I'm still believing. I'm holding for them. Let your humble servant plead, Lord. Let us plead for them as one who stands between the living and dead, like one who in Sodom was pleading for the Sodomites. Come out of it. Come out of it quickly. May they come, Lord, humbly and sweetly to the throne of God now in their heart. Then, Jesus, from this day henceforth, you'll be mine. I make this pledge to you now. You guys just sit here in this seat where your spirit has struck me. If it struck me here, I won't have to go any further than right here. Right here's where you met me. Right here's where we're going to settle it. Right here on this second seat, third seat, fifth seat, whatever it is. Right here's where it's going to be settled. Of course, here's where you condemn me. Here's where you promise to make it right. For though I would be filthy and dirty, I should be made white like snow. I believe all your word. I'm ready to walk in it, believe it, accept it. And I now do this for the glory of God, knowing that my life is no good to me. It's no good to God. No good to my neighbors, no good to nothing else. Just simply a good to the devil to make a, a puppet out of me, to throw me around about, maybe to be some man's toy to look upon, maybe some woman idol. God, make me a servant to you. Grant it, Lord. I commit them to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. With our heads bowed and our hearts, I can. My Savior, sincerely, friend, it may be your last time. Can you hear that little voice? Please, I can. What's, it, what's calling you if your Savior is? The Word. What must you do to deny the world and take? Cross and follow. Oh, I've neglected baptism in Jesus' name, Lord. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him where? Through the water, through the garden, through anywhere, house of prayer, in the pool, anywhere. Decided. Oh, in through the garden, I'll go with him, with him, oh, I'll 
I'll go with him through the judgment. Whether the word's right or the church is right. Uh, whether I'm right or he's right. Is my conscience right or is his word right? You're in the judgment place now. What I have believed, is it right or is his word right? Do I think it's all right to have short hair, wear shorts? Do I think it's all right to belong to a denomination? What did he say? I'll go with, with all now where he leads me. Well, I got my hands up too, Lord. Lord, wherever it is, where's the next message to be preached? Is it back here tonight? Over in Africa, Germany, Switzerland, where is it, Lord? Where? Wherever you lead, Lord. your heads bound, will you go with him everywhere he leads you? Will you go with him when the times are running low, people are persecuting, laughing, making fun? I'll still be with him. I'll still go. I'll move right on with you, Lord, wherever you are. I'll still stand loyal and true. In the heat of the battle, I'll still stand loyal and true. If I fall, you'll raise me up again, Lord. He that loses life for my sake shall find it. So I'll go with him, with him. Now all that mean that from your heart, let's raise our hands now and our hearts to him. Our healing, trumpet now. And when the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, let's sing it all of us now. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, give us the key. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, then time shall be no And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. Oh, and the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. Oh, and the road is called
Just raise your hands and say, By thy grace, Lord. By thy grace. Now, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's just turn and just shake hands with somebody by you and say, By God's help, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up The last one. The Lord shall sound and time shall be no That broke into his turn. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye. And then when all the birds shall gather to her on the other side. Oh, when the road is called yonder, I'll be there. Let's just sing it out. When the Just walking along someday. You're fear somebody. Who is it? Mother. Hey, man, it ain't going to be long now. Hey. Just in a few minutes, you're changed. And we'll be meet them and be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, I say, here's Brother Stewart. The old brother used to be at church here. Why, here's Brother D.R. Here's Brother So. Why, look at here. They're all around me. What's the matter here? Just in a few minutes. I know they've done appear to me. It ain't going to be long now. I'm going to be changed now. Just in a moment. Just a moment. Oh, yes. The morning breaks eternal bright and fair. All the mystic clouds, as he said, Israel now has been like a morning cloud, a vapor. Your righteousness has faded away. And it's all faded out into the sunlight who holds it all. Amen. Then the rose called up down earth. Oh, I'll be there. All right. Until tonight. Till we meet. We don't know what time this will take place, friends. It's been a story a long time, but it's the truth. And it will happen at right the time now. By God's grace, we hope it's 7.30 tonight. God be with you till we meet. stand out your feet. Oh, isn't it wonderful? This is heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Would not swap this for anything. You know how I love to fish and how I love to hunt because I see God out there in the wilderness. I love it. But oh, I wouldn't change one minute for this for all the experiences of One minute of this, that satisfaction. God created me a revival. Let me be the revival. Let each one of us be the revival. Amen. The revival in me. Make me, Lord, to hunger. Make me to thirst. Create in me, Lord, that what is needed in me. Let me from this hour on be thine. More consecrated servant, a better servant. More blessed of you. More able. More humbler. More kinder. More willing to work. More looking to the things that are positive and forgetting the things that are in the past and the negative. Let me press towards the mark of the high calling of Christ. Amen. That's our desire, isn't it? Amen. All right, let's, till we meet tonight, let's take the name of Jesus with us. Now. Each one of you. Take the name of Jesus with
bow our heads. Take the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. When temptations round you get.